Hi, I'm Aras Jaral. And I'm Mark Mazza. And this is Art with Friends. Today we're going to be discussing the beautiful piece by Salvador Dali called Crucifixion. Let's get into some background before we talk about the actual piece. The Spanish-born artist Salvador Dali was officially allied with Surrealism from 1929 to 1941, and even afterward, his work continued to reflect the influence of Surrealist thought and methodology. His flamboyance, flair for drama and self-promotion, and hyperactive imagination reinvigorated the movie and its public popularity. Dali, who was given to hallucinations and paranoic visions, cultivated these outrageous subjects for his paintings, rendering them so meticulously that they were unsettling in their clinical matter-of-factness. Such pictures exemplified the Surrealist preoccupation with dreams and the unconscious. Surrealism originated in the late 1910s and early 20s as a movement that experimented with a new mode of expression. Wowzers. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool, too. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Surrealism sought to release the unbridled imagination of the subconscious. I, too, enjoy dwelling in this realm. And now, on to the piece. Dali utilized his theory of nuclear mysticism, a fusion of Catholicism, mathematics, and science to create this unusual interpretation of Christ's crucifixion. Levitating before a hypercube, a geometric multidimensional form, Christ's body is healthy, athletic, and bears no sign of torture. The crown of thorns and nails are missing. The artist's wife, Gala poses as a devotional figure, witnessing Christ's spiritual triumph over corporeal harm. This devotional figure is Mary Magdalene. Several dreamlike elements from Dali's earlier surrealist work feature in this painting. These dreamlike elements include a levitating figure, vast barren landscape, and a chessboard. Aras and I love chess. Hey Aras, let's talk more about the cross. Sure Mark, why not? The most striking change Dali makes from nearly every other crucifixion painting concerns the cross. Instead of painting Christ on a wooden cross, Dali depicts him on the net of a hypercube, also known as a tesseract. The unfolding of a tesseract into eight cubes is, anal is analogous to unfolding the sides of a cube into six squares. The use of a hypercube for the cross has been interpreted as a geometric symbol for the transcendental nature of God. Just as God exists in a space that is incomprehensible to humans, the hypercube exists in four spatial dimensions, which is equally inaccessible to the mind. Mind blown. The net of the hypercube is a three-dimensional representation of it, similar to how Christ is a human form of God that is more relatable to people. The word corpus in the title can refer both to the body of Christ and to the geometric figures, reinforcing the link Dali makes between religion, mathematics, and science. Christ's levitation above the earth could symbolize his rise above earthly desire and suffering. The motif of the cube is present elsewhere. Gala is standing on one and the chessboard is made up of squares. Fascinating. This painting is composed of oil on canvas and its dimensions are 76 and a half inches by 48 and 3 fourths inches. It was made in the year 1954 and is located in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which is in New York City, which we went on a field trip and it was a great time. Thanks, Miss Carpino. Ha. Dali uses classical elements along with ideas inspired by math and science. Some noticeably classical features, sorry, classic features, are the drapery of the clothing and the lighting that theatrically envelops Christ to reinvent the traditional biblical scene of the crucifixion. This includes Jesus' face depicted as turned away from the viewer, making it completely obscured, and the crown of thorns missing from Christ's head, and the nails from his hands and feet, leaving his body completely devoid of the wounds often closely associated with the crucifixion. Okay, boys and girls, time for a game of I Spy. So, if one observes the original painting closely, five different images of Gala appear in Christ's right knee, and five different images of Salvador Dali appear in his left knee. The most prominent two being Gala's back, neck, and back of the head, with, right, with her right arm extended upward, and Salvador's face 
repleted with trademark upswept mustache. Additional knee images translate extremely poorly to the reproductions and prints. You know, while I was admiring the crucifixion by Salvador Dali, I was reminded of another crucifixion work I learned back in AP Art History with the incredible Miss Carpino. That work is The Suicide of Judas and Crucifixion of Christ, made of ivory from the late antiquity period. Albeit two very different eras of art, they do share some similarities in their depiction of Jesus. In The Suicide of, Ju of Judas, as well as in Dali's crucifixion piece, Jesus appears healthy and athletic compared to the more popularized depiction of him shown in a defeated and weakened state. Similarly, Jesus in both pieces fails to be succumbing to the physical agony of the crucifixion, though crucifixion by Dali takes this concept a step further by not even depicting the nails and thorns of the head. And so, in both pieces, there is an absence of blood. It truly is fascinating how two pieces, although centuries apart, can have such in common. The crucifix of Archbishop Garrow also shares some similar qualities and elements as the crucifixion painting by Salvador Dali. The most obvious is the fact that it's a crucifixion piece. In this piece, just like Salvador's, Jesus, also known as Christ, is being crucified. But there's more important similarities between the two which in both painting, well, both the painting and this piece, there's no blood shown from any of the cuts in the hands or the feet. So many of the representations that we have nowadays, you can see evidently the blood from the nails in the hands and the feet, but in both Salvador Dali's painting and the crucifix of Archbishop Garrow, you cannot see any red blood streaming from either of the hands or the feet. Wow. Hey, thanks for joining us on today's segment of Art with Friends. I'm Aras. And I'm Mark. We'll see you next episode. Toodles. Goodbye.